So I've had the new laser now for about two, two and a bit months now. And on the whole, I've been pretty happy with it. It's a little bit loud from the gearbox, but on the whole, you can make some really good parts with it. What is letting the side down is the standard four-way tool post. If you've never used one of these before, they're essentially a block of metal with some slots machined in for tool holders. And the tool post can be indexed four ways to allow for four different tools. Nothing wrong with that unless you regularly use more than four lathe tools, which I do. And it also becomes a problem if you use tools that are shorter than 16mm in height, which means you do need to shim them up to match the centre height of the lathe. And having to shim each tool every single time you change it out becomes a little bit tedious. It's for that reason why I've always preferred to use a quick change tool post on my lathes. As the name sort of suggests, they're quicker than using a normal tool post as all the cutters are held in these individual tool holders and they can be very quickly swapped in and out of the lathe. Each tool holder can also be adjusted for centre height so you don't have to worry about shimming the tool to centre height. All you have to do is simply drop in the tool, lock it into position and you can start machining. Now the only drawbacks that I've found is that they can be a bit expensive depending on what brand and model that you buy and they're not going to be as rigid as a four-way tool post. But I think with a good quick change tool holder, you can definitely get very close and I think the trade-off, at least on a machine this size, is worth it. So worth it in fact that that's what I did twice on the old lathe. And whilst I could go out and buy one, I think these are really fun tools to make. This is the first one that I made about three years ago, long before I had a milling machine, and the dovetail simply bolts onto the housing and it worked really well on the old mini lathe. And of course what we have here is the compact tool post which I also made. It's also a piston lock design, but here the lever rotates a screw which will push the piston and lock the tool holder in place. Sadly this style of tool just won't cut it with the bigger lathe, so I guess it's time to make a new one, preferably one that is a little bit more rigid than this one. Now a really popular style that a lot of people tend to gravitate towards to is one with a sliding dovetail. This design is going to be a bit more complicated to make, but it should be a lot more rigid than the piston style design. And I think the distinct advantage over this design compared to say a pull style tool holder is that the tool holder geometry is able to remain quite basic. Some of them can get quite complicated to make and that can be a bit annoying especially if you need to make say 10, 15 or even 20 different holders at one time. So I'll start off with a piece of I think this is medium tensile bar stock and this should be suitable for the job. I'll first cut it down to size and then get it cleaned up. Alright, well that's the stock cleaned up, so I guess let's get started and see if we can make it work. The first thing I need to do is drill a hole in the centre and then ream it for a locking stud. I'll then drill an offset hole, and that hole will be for the screw, which will move the dovetail up and down.
and that hole will then get tapped with the tap that we made previously. So that'll be M20 by 1. And thankfully that turned out pretty alright. We can now turn the part on its side and then start to machine one of the dovetails. With the first one now machined in, I'll rotate the vise 5 degrees and I'll finish machining the slot. And between you and me, it's always a good idea to rotate the vise in the wrong direction and then get that wrong for 90% of the cut and only catch it at the last minute. This does a really good job at keeping you awake, especially when you've run out of coffee. With that now machined in, I can now machine in a slot and I'll follow that up with a T-slot cutter. And that is the main body done. The next thing we need to make is an insert that can very snugly fit in the T-slots. And between you and me, this took a lot longer to make than I would really like to admit.
And in the end, it looks like we got a really good fit. But the wedge is still a fair amount oversized and it's definitely the wrong shape. So that's going to need fixing. And to simplify all the setup, I'll simply machine the top and bottom in situ and that's going to make my life a lot easier. I'll then machine one side to be 90 degrees, and at that point, I can now machine in the second dovetail. And at this point, you can probably see where this design is going. The dovetail can now slide up and down, and that will close up the dovetail and wedge onto the tool holder. However, we do need a way to move it up and down, so what we'll have to do now is clamp it in the vise at an angle, and then machine in several slots using the T-slot cutter. With the slots now machined in, I still need a screw to go along with it, which means I'll need to make up a screw with a square thread. Now instead of using the lathe to cut the square thread, which could pose a lot of issues given that square threads can be very difficult to form, I'll instead turn to the helical milling attachment which I made for the milling machine a few months ago. The dividing head is connected to the lead screw through a gear train and that allows it to spin as I move the table. And with the current setup, I can expect 8mm of travel on the table for one revolution of the dividing head i.e. an 8mm pitch. This is a much coarser thread than what can be achieved on the lathe, and milling it this way means I don't have to worry about machining up a special cutter in order to cut square threads. The final thing left to do is machine up an end cap and that will fit on the bottom. Now this end cap is not expected to take much force, it's simply there to keep everything aligned and in place, and just in case a little bit of Loctite should be enough to prevent it from unscrewing.
Alright, well that's the tool post done. And you know what, it actually was a lot more straightforward than I was expecting. Now it should be said, this design does require the use of a wrench to move the dovetail up and down. And that is a little bit different to other designs which ditch this entirely and simply have two levers. One reason why I went down this route was simply to keep the handles out of shot. It should hopefully make it a bit easier for me to film. Instead of having two handles in the shot, I only have to worry about one. The other reason why I went down this route was it was simply a bit more straightforward to machine it this way. Although if I did want to change it to using two levers, it would be a very simple change to the CAD model. The final thing left for me to do is make up a few tool holders, something which I've done many times over the years. And that certainly looks like a tool holder. The only thing that worries me here is the offset of that dovetail towards the back. And I guess in hindsight, I could have probably made the dovetail a little bit bigger. Again, these can be very simple changes made to the SolidWorks drawing, which I will probably do for the future. The only thing left to do is see if it works, or am I going to spend the next week remaking this? So that was a half millimetre cut, which finished up doing a one millimetre depth of cut. Definitely felt better than the old quick change tool post, and I wasn't seeing any deflection. And at one and a half millimetres depth of cut, I can see a small amount of deflection, but it is quite minimal, and I couldn't see it by eye. I could only see it re-watching it back on the computer. And at 2.5mm depth of cut, the deflection is definitely noticeable, but I do suspect that a fair amount of it is deflection coming off the compound, not the tool post. Overall, that was pretty good. Despite my concerns, I can push it pretty much to the same limits as the old 4-way tool post, which, I don't know, I'd definitely call a big success. So with the basic proof of concept done, it shouldn't be too difficult to make the dovetail a little bit less offset and a little bit bigger. And it shouldn't be too difficult to make another 5 or 10 of these tool holders. Thanks for watching.